On the 30th of January 1933, this man became Chancellor of Germany. That night, his Nazis flaunted their swastikas through Berlin. For all civilized men, that hooked cross was to become a symbol of evil and terror. How did Adolf Hitler, the Nazi leader, rise to supreme power from obscurity? In 1929, industrial Germany had been hit by the Great World Depression. By the end of 1932, six million people were out of work. In despair, more and more people were attracted to political parties who appeared to offer simple solutions to appalling problems. Many joined the Communist Party. There were others who marched under the banner of the Nazis, a party looking for scapegoats to attack. Hitler, their leader, gave them targets, communists, Jews, democratic politicians. His stormtroopers, the SA, carried the battle into the streets and beer halls. <laughs> Chaos and violence suited Hitler's purpose. The more turmoil in the streets, the more the Germans would be likely to vote for a strong leader. Meanwhile, Hitler took care to appeal to all sections of German society. For the workers, he had one message. His carefully planned campaigns took him all over Germany. People flocked to hear him. With the middle classes, he played on their fear of communism and the prospect of economic ruin, every bit as bad as they'd suffered in 1923. He tried to appeal to people of all classes by denouncing the Treaty of Versailles and accusing the German politicians who'd signed it of betraying the fatherland. <laughs> He gave Goebbels, an unscrupulous propagandist, the job of spreading the Nazi message. Hitler came to German industrialists for money. In return, he promised them a disciplined workforce and protection against communism. By one means or the other, the Nazis found the money to finance three massive election campaigns between 1930 and 1932. Their tactics seemed to pay off. In May 1928, the Nazis had been just one of several small parties in the Reichstag, the German parliament, with only 12 seats. But in September 1930, they increased that number to 107. In July 1932, they became the largest single party with 230 seats. But in November, they dropped back to 196, and it looked as if Hitler's bid for power might fail. But in the end, he was saved by President Hindenburg, a respected national hero. Hindenburg allowed himself to be persuaded that the Nazis could be tamed and made respectable if Hitler led a coalition government. And so on the 30th of January 1933, he appointed Hitler Chancellor of Germany. His first act was to call for another election. 
In his own mind, it was to be the last. He was bent on the destruction of Parliament. He had no intention of tolerating other parties. But in public, he made a straight appeal for support. I ask of you, German people, that after you've given the other parties 14 years, you should give us four. One week before the election, the Reichstag building went up in flames. This event suited the Nazis very well. Hitler blamed the communists and used the fire to persuade Hindenburg to sign a decree which in practice gave the Nazis power to put their political opponents in prisons and concentration camps. Although the majority of Germans still didn't vote for Hitler's party, in the March elections the Nazis gained 288 seats, their greatest number yet. The Nazis now dominated the Reichstag, where Göring, Hitler's ruthless right-hand man, was already president. The building was packed with Nazi stormtroopers. Hitler now wanted to be free to do as he wished. He demanded and got an enabling act, giving him the power to make his own laws. Soon, all other political parties were abolished, and many of their leaders herded into concentration camps. They were to become places of brutality and horror and death. The Nazis tried to destroy ideas too. One writer said, where one burns books, one ultimately burns people. But now Hitler faced problems in his own ranks. The SA, the stormtroopers, swollen to over two million men, wanted more say in how the country was run. In particular, their leader, Röhm, wanted to control the regular army. Hitler was persuaded that Röhm was a threat to his own power. On the 30th of June, 1934, the Knight of the Long Knives, Röhm and a great many others were murdered in cold blood. The sinister Himmler and his black-shirted SS were Hitler's instruments of death. Himmler would later be given complete control of the concentration camps and the German secret police. Hitler justified the murders to the Reichstag. I ordered the leaders of the guilty shot. If anyone asks me why we didn't use the regular courts, I will reply, I alone during those 24 hours was the supreme court of justice of the German people. That August, Hindenburg died. Immediately, Hitler made himself Führer, leader of the German nation. All soldiers now swore an oath of loyalty to him alone. Adolf Hitler! Adolf Hitler! As Führer, Hitler was now all-powerful in the Nazi party and the German state. <laughs> 